everyone. Welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. And today we're going to close out our mini-series on word problems by looking at round three. If you hadn't yet had a chance to check out rounds one and two, I encourage you to do so so you can look at how to solve other types of word problems. But if you have, let's get started with round three and close out our mini-series. So we have an example that says 231 students from the grade went on a field trip. Some of the students rode in vans, which each hold seven students. The rest of the students rode in buses, which each hold 25 students. How many of each vehicle type were used if there were 15 vehicles used in total? So there's a whole lot of information here, several different numbers and um, different types of equations that can be set up and looking at how to solve for the vehicle types. So let's kind of break it down a little bit. They tell us that there are both buses and vans. Vans hold seven, buses hold 25. And there were 231 total students, 15 total vehicles. So let's look at equations we can use to set up to help solve this. So if you look at vans and buses, the total number they told us is 15. If you look at students, the total number is 231 but it's based on how many can fit in vans and how many can fit in buses. So since seven fit in each van and 25 fit in each bus, I'm gonna use that as coefficients for the vans and buses. And when I incorporate that, I have a total of 231 students. So now we have two equations and we wanna we want to figure out basically, you know, how many of each vehicle is used. So we gotta solve for V and solve for B. Um, and so whenever I have problems like this, it's called a system of equations. Typically what you want to do with systems of equations is you want to find a way to either add or subtract the two equations together in a way that eliminates one of your variables so you can solve for the other one. Once you solve for the one, you can use that information to solve for the other. There's a lot going on here. However, whenever you're, you know, in order to really eliminate one of the variables, you need the coefficients to either be the same for the, the one variable or opposites, where it's the same number, just one is negative, one is positive. In this case, that isn't like that. The Vs are one and seven, the buses or Bs are one and 25. So what you can do in these situations is you can actually take and basically pick one of the variables you want to eliminate and then multiply one of your equations by some factor or in some cases, you need to multiply both equations by a factor um, in order to get those coefficients to be the same. So in this case, I said I wanted to get rid of the vans. So in order for me to do that, I need both of the V coefficients to either be 7 or 1 to be 7, 1 to be negative 7. So I'm going to go ahead and take and multiply my first equation by 7. That way, both Vs or vans are 7. And when you do this, you have to multiply the entire first equation by 7. That means every piece of it. And so when I do that, I get 7v, seven, 7 vans, plus 7 buses equals 105, which is 15 times 7. And then the second equation stays the same. So now my van coefficients are both 7, which means if I were to subtract the two, they would go away, which is great because that leaves me with just buses to figure out, and then I can go from there. So I'm going to subtract both, uh, subtract the two equations. 7 minus 7 goes away. It's gone. 7 buses minus 25 buses is a negative 18 buses. And then 105 minus 231 is negative 126. So now I just have one more step to solve. I got to divide both sides by negative 18. And when I do that using the calculator, I get buses are 7. So great, there's 7 buses. Now I gotta use that to figure out how many vans they are. So going back to my original first equation of vans plus buses is 15, I can now plug in seven for buses and then figure that out you know, for the rest. So I just gotta subtract seven from both sides and then I get vans equals eight, which means looking at each of the types of vehicles, I have eight vans and seven buses. Fantastic. All right. Good, let's look at one more example. This one says a printing company has two models of printing presses. Model A can print 70 books per day. Model B can print 55 books per day. The company's 14 total printing presses allow them to print 905 books per day. How many of each model of printing presses does the company have? 
So this is very similar to the last problem, just a different kind of scenario. We're looking at printing presses and books instead of uh, students and vehicles. So we have two equations that can be created from this. We have the total number of printing presses, which is just model A plus model B, and they tell us there's 14 total. And then they tell us that model A has 70 books it can print, model B has 55 books it can print, and the total it does per day is 905. So that's the two pieces of information I want to figure out. So again, the idea with the system of equations or two equations is we really want to make sure that one of the variables has the same coefficient or opposite numbers. So this time I'm going to go ahead and look at getting rid of B because in my second equation, the coefficient is smaller. So that means I have to multiply the first equation by a smaller number. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the first one by 55. And again, multiply the entire equation by 55. I get 55A plus 55B is 770, which is just 14 times 55. All right. Um, and the reason, you know, the reason I do that is now my model B coefficient are the same, which means if I subtract the equations, I'll get rid of B. However, in this example, you know, if I subtract the second equation from the first one, then I'm going to get a negative A value, which is fine. I just would rather not have negatives. So to make it a little bit easier, I'm just going to switch the two equations. I'm going to bring the second one to the top and the first one to the bottom, which is totally fine. You can do that whenever you want to. No problem at all. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead again. I'm going to subtract my two equations. And when I do that, 70A minus 55A is 15A. 55B minus 55B goes away. There's just nothing left. Then 905 minus 770 is 135. One last step, I got to divide both sides by 15. And when I do that, I have nine model A's. All right. And again, because they ask for how many of each model, I need to figure out how many model B's there are. And this is the easy part. I have my original equation of A plus B is 14. I know what A is, so I'm going to plug it in, nine. So nine plus B is 14. I'm just going to subtract nine from both sides and I get B is five which means that of each type, there are nine mono A's and five mono B's. So I hope this helps as you get to problems that pretty much require you to set up a system of equations. Again, I recommend that you look at your equations. It's highly likely that you may have to multiply one or even both of your equations by some, uh, some number, some factor, um, in order to get one of the variables to be the same number or opposite numbers. And that's really the key to starting out solving systems of equations. Once you do that, you'll be eliminating one of the variables and you can solve for the other and then use that information to solve for the first one that you originally eliminated. And anyway, I hope this helps and I hope this mini series on word problems has helped you tackle word problems. Congratulations, you survived all three rounds and I appreciate you watching these and as always, Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions or you need assistance and you live in the Palm Beach County area, visit our website at GEDS.com to find a location near you and sign up for classes.